Welcome to the Claremont Lewis Museum of Art. I'm Seth Pringle, Associate Director and one of the curators of Fern Jacobs' A Personal World. This first retrospective of Jacobs' work originated at Craft in America Center in Los Angeles in 2022, where it was curated by Craft in America director Emily Zayden. We're very grateful that Craft in America was willing to partner with us as we offer an expanded version of the exhibition here in Claremont. Fern Jacobs' work includes some of the most innovative and inspired fiber-based work of the past 50 years. Her sculptures are held in such museum collections as the Smithsonian Museum, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Museum of Arts and Design in New York, the Museum of Fine Arts Boston, and many others. We're excited to have you join us on a walkthrough of the exhibition with Fern Jacobs. So we're in the first room. There are three rooms to the exhibit. And the first room is my early work. These two pieces are very early pieces. Oh, I started by being a weaver. This is about the third weaving on these frames. You can weave several layers at once. Like This is one, two, three layers. I studied with Olga de Amaral at Haystack, which was very exciting. She's an internationally known weaver. I think I really wanted to build things. Well, that's what stopped me weaving. So maybe when I started doing this, I realized weaving, it's too flat, it's too soft, and the rectangle, you're always dealing with that rectangle on the loom. You always have these, um, you know, the threads, and they're always like this. Um, but I didn't know it then, because I didn't know you could do anything else. I don't know if I started these before I went to CGU, or, or was I inspired being there? But at some point, I decided to do a talk on earthworks. Why did artists, why were they leaving the studio, and why were they leaving the gallery and going and digging in the earth? I got really interested in that. And I think maybe that these came out of the that talk of realizing in some way, I wanted to go into the earth. I wanted to be close to the earth because these pieces to me were very close to the earth. They, they just came out of the earth. Here in gallery two, we have selections from your personal collections, which we wanted to show to give people a sense of your inspirations your influences, and we're very grateful that you're able to share all these these objects with our, our visitors. And also my work is in here too, so it's a combination of what I collect and some things I've made and my work. Each one is such an individual experience for me. You know, with each piece, it's kind of what I do. You know, I want to look around it. I want to see how I, why did I make this black? How did I, how did I know when to bring in the black? How did I know to make these shapes out of the color? This is called the round, and this piece probably started somewhere in here. It didn't, it, it did not do this. It goes in both directions. You know, like I said, with each piece, I just do it. And I do it row by row by row by row by row by row by row. The hardest part is the bottom, to get them to, to look like they need to look. And maybe the top. I mean, all of it. I mean, nothing is easy. But physically, to, to work out these bottoms is really something. I call it the round because, in a way, it is related, I think, to the figure. My work is related a lot, I think, to the human figure. And I don't want to say I see figure, I see landscape, I see sky, I see earth, I see so many things. And I think everybody has the right to see whatever they see in it. I don't want to tell anybody what this is. It's one thing to me, and it can be anything to somebody else. They can have a totally different relationship with it, and I'm fine with that. Both of these to me are figures. I mean, to me, this is so much feminine. I, I, this is very feminine to me. So it's something about what happens in the interior of us as human beings. And it can be anything, but there's something to me this was very interior. 
And that one, Origins, to me, it starts at the beginning and grows into humanity or something. I mean, it's just, and, and, and you can see it in so many different ways, you know. I mean, I see something, but I, and I, again, I mean, I, could, I say, and I don't want to say, and I end up saying it anyway, because I've been doing that while I'm here. I can see many things in this, and, and I love it. I mean, I, my feeling about these things right now is I just love them. I love them. I just love them. Okay, so this is where I work. These pieces are very time consuming. <laughs> very time consuming. But it's what I ended up loving to do and that's what I do. So I think of my work as like a dance. I, there's a dancer and she's just moving and she moves constantly. She's constantly moving. I don't know if she stops or I start seeing an image in that movement. I can see a shape, I can see a size, and then I start getting this color in my mind of what color to use. So I will start because I'll have a color in mind and I'll have a size in mind, but then I start with this. I just start with this and I'm gonna do this now um, and I'll have the color in mind and then I'll just start wrapping. But then once I start working that color, everything changes. Because what I do is I start then moving it around and I go, okay, I'm going to connect it here. Or I'm going to make this really long and maybe connect this here and make this long and then I just start playing with it. What starts happening is just something starts forming. But at this point, it could be like this. It could be like this. This could be a side. This could be the bottom. This could come down here. It could go up. Right now I'm seeing it like this, but at some point I might totally change it. So the, this rust color is the main color right now, and I'm even thinking I could even change that. It could get darker. I'm thinking even maybe ending it in red or, or brown. Um, I have no idea. And it could end in this. It could do anything. I just, I don't know. At this point, I don't know, but I'm thinking, okay, this doesn't have to stay this color for the whole piece, um, and we'll see what happens. So all of these, all of these colors are made up of two colors. But what I do is I'll cut one color, I put it in here, and then this makes it go really fast. So this is two and one, or maybe three and one. So the two now goes with the one here, and the one goes with the two here, and I've got, so I've got two colors. I've got two colors that I never had before. And the reason for this was when I first started working, and then I just twist them. I don't, I don't make a big deal out of it. I twist, and then I twist, and then I twist. And then I just make these little skeins, and that's what you're seeing here. These are all skeins. And it's fun because, you know, I have no idea what the color's going to look like. So this is the core. So I'm going to start wrapping around the core with my thread. So I'll wrap maybe, huh, I don't know, four or five times. And I, there's a needle. So what I use, I use needle, thread, and scissors. That's it. That's the, that's the piece. So what I'll do is try to find where I want to put this, and I think I want to put this here. So then I, I make an eight, and I'm sewing it now into the previous row of this piece. and I make this eight connection. And I pull tight. So then I wrap four times. One, two, three, four, and then I make a connection. And that's the whole technique. 
thousands of forefs and connections. And the interesting thing, it, really interesting to me, is that I can count fours and I, my mind can be off thinking about a million other things, the world, something, you know, that's happening, you know, wherever or in me, and I'm counting four. Whenever I stop thinking, I can hear the four. I can hear myself counting the four. So both of those are going on like simultaneously. Okay. And I look at both sides to make sure that both sides are covered, that the thread is covering this core. So you, I want this to totally cover the core. So you only see that outside thread. It's so fascinating to me how much I love doing this. <laughs> crazy and then I think I'm crazy sometimes I think you know you're totally nuts but who cares I can be nuts and I love creating the shape you know it's so challenging if if it's too easy if 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 I if I I'm too comfortable with it you know if I know too much about the piece I'll throw it off I want to go, I, I want to be sent in a new direction, or I, or I never want to repeat myself. I think the thing that's interesting about my work is every piece is different. At some point, they might connect, or never. Or maybe this will go out in one direction, this will go out in another direction. Can you imagine, I've been doing this for over 50 years. God. When I traveled, I started the small piece. I've actually been working on this for a while and I've had to stop it a couple of times because I traveled and then I got involved with making other pieces. I'm dying to finish this piece and you can see I'm, I'm, I'm just slowly thickening, thickening the core. It can get this thick. And I guess what keeps me excited is, is watching the form develop. I mean, just even this, watching that thicken. It's exciting to me, you know? Um, watch, just watching the next little shape, you know, piece of the shape get formed. I, I just, I love it. <laughs> I mean, how, I couldn't do this if I didn't love it, obviously. This is not the easiest thing in the world to do. And it's not fast. And it's so not our society right now. And that's fine with me. It helps me feel connected to the earth and maybe my own earth. I really feel it connects me to some rhythm that is very moving to me. Yeah. For me, this is my religion in a way. There's something for me that's religious about it. It's, it's not a business. So I, I stay in the piece as long as I have to. It's really important. I'm not, you know, thinking about time, finish. I'm thinking about staying in this until it, it, it's done, until um, I can't do any more, I shouldn't do any more, it's just time to stop. And, that, and that's a risk. I want to keep working till I die. And I love it, you know, and if I work too much, I'm hurting my hands and I could really ruin my chances of working and I don't want to work too little. I'm thinking of the exhibit. And these pieces are done. I know they're done. And, and all the work that I'm looking at looks right to me. You know, it looks like I did what needed to be done. Um, and that, that's how I judge it. Thank you for joining us. And thanks to Craft in America for partnering with us on this exhibition. And to our sponsors, June and Simon K.C. Lee for their generous sponsorship that made this exhibition possible.